Okay. So I'm going to write the implicit equation one more time. What are the units of this equation? PSI, right? If we're talking about. Uh, Dr. Balhoff told a funny joke this morning. You probably heard him say it before. There's, there's two types of countries in this world. The countries that use SI units and countries that have put a man on the moon. <laughs> yeah, he said... I actually have not. I'm I'm sort of unit agnostic. I kind of feel like you should you should use what, whatever units you prefer. I don't. Uh, but but uh, but obviously the obviously the petroleum engineering you have to be comfortable using English units. Okay, so um, there's nothing wrong with this equation uh, being in units of psi and. In fact, there's a lot of things nice about it because the coefficients are all unitless, right? Eta is a, is a dimensionless constant, right? So, um, you know, from a numerical analysis standpoint, there's a lot of nice things about having a, a dimensionless problem like that because you can do little tricks to control the condition number of the matrix, which adds some stability and other things. Uh, it's not really important for what we're talking about here, but nevertheless, um, there's nothing wrong with that, but of course, as petroleum engineers, what we're really interested in is how much oil can we get out of the ground, right? And so it might be preferable to work in units of, like, flow rate, right? So how much, especially when we start to put in wells, injectors and producers, you know, we're going to inject at a certain rate or produce at a certain rate. And so we sort of nice to have equations in terms of rates. And so what we're going to do is just multiply this equation So this is the area of the grid block, delta x, porosity, compressibility, formation volume factor, delta t. Uh, another way to write this would be that this is the volume, right? The area times delta x is the volume And also, just recall that eta is equal to alpha delta t delta x squared, which is equal to k mu v ct delta t delta x squared. So we're going to plug in these values for eta and at the same time multiply both sides of the equation by this, okay? And you'll see that some terms can cancel out, right? So we have minus k So this is the volume of the ith grid block.
All right. Can anyone tell me what the units of that equation is? So what's the, K is permeability. What, is, what does it have units of? Yeah, link squared. But yeah. It's a volume per day. But yeah, I mean, so like we have, we have, this is link squared, areas link squared, delta X is length, right? So we have link to the fourth over length. So then the numerator, we have length cubed. That's volume, right? And then in, in the denominator, um, we've already canceled the delta x. The formation volume factor is unitless. And the viscosity has units of what? Yeah, I mean, so it's like pressure second. So we have pressure second, or you know, pressure time. Pressure times time, and then we, we have the, the actual pressure here. So we have a pressure in the numerator, those two cancel, and we're left with a volume per time, right? And so, in, you know, common unit would be like feet cubed per day, something like that. So it's a rate, flow rate. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's introduce some definitions. We're going to call T transmissibility. And it's going to be equal to Ka mu dW delta x. Right. So that has units of, like in, in English units, millidarcy per foot centipoise. Right. Millidarcy foot centipoise. And then we're going to have a B, we'll c call it I for the ith grid block. But it's going to be, that's just mainly to distinguish between BW. This is unfortunate, but the notes. You know, BW is always the formation volume factor, right? Uh, the, the, the W kind of stands for water. So here this B is going to represent the accumulation. And that's going to be the velocity of the ith grid block <coughs> times the porosity times the compressibility over the formation volume factor. So velocity, uh, the the volume times the porosity, this is the total pore volume times the compressibility, right? So this is sort of a, it's going to have units of like feet cubed per PSI. And so with those definitions, we'll rewrite our equation minus T PI minus 1. Yes. So if we write if we write this out for our four grid block problem, you'll see is that we get something like 1 over delta T 
one. B is a diagonal matrix. This is up here. This again is for the case where you have a uh, Dirichlet boundary condition at the left edge or at x equal to zero. And all of that is going to be equal to Or more compactly, we can write I'm gonna write two arrows to so imply that this T is a matrix. As is B. So where this is a Q vector. And so, you know, if we call this A and this X and this B, we're just solving the same matrix equation, AX equal to B. So that's the implicit equation. If we were to work it out for the explicit, and I'll just write it here. So for explicit, we have that Yep. Keep in mind that you can have a PDF copy of these notes. These equations are also in the PDF, Dr. Bauhoff's notes. Uh, so, but yes, I'll 
put it back. Yeah, so the, in this example, our four block grid, uh, I, get, I didn't write it explicitly, but there we have a dirt at the left. So a fixed PB here and Q equal to zero there. Right? So that's implied and that's where the structure comes from. So it's, it's very analogous to before where we had one plus three eta and So, it's it's equal to zero. No no flow. That that according to that structure for that four block grid. So, um, so there's an example. Uh, if you go to the on the canvas, the files, there's some example problems. I think Dr. Balhoff showed you these or worked these uh, in terms of pressure and eta, right? He worked this. So this uh, third example is in terms of the, tr these are the so-called transmissibility form, which is the form of the equations we'll use for the rest of the semester, okay? And so these equations, uh, again, you'll see there the equations that we derived, the first one, we didn't drive it, but I wrote it down for the explicit. The second one is for implicit. <coughs> and so then if you, uh, this is the same reservoir conditions as the previous two examples, but basically if you plug in the numbers, uh, there's the four block grid that I wrote down. If you plug in all the numbers, um, you'll notice that the units do work out to feet cubed uh, per day here. And there is, you, you mentioned a uh, conversion factor. It's this right here to get it to feet cubed per day. But ultimately, when you do that, uh, you get the exact same answers as that you got in the previous two cases. And you should. It's, we didn't do anything but multiply the equations on both sides by a constant. So the pressures should be identical to what they were. Um, and they are, if you look at them. And so uh, also, You'll see that the explicit and implicit results, they're different from each other, right? Uh, but no one, one is no more correct than the other. And if you were to take, the, the differences can be explained by the coarsity of the problem. There's only four grid blocks. If you were to take 400 grid blocks, I suspect that the differences between the explicit and implicit would be much, much smaller. Um, and you'll notice that CMG and the implicit method have numbers that are very, very close to one another. And that's because CMG actually uses an implicit scheme. The reason the, the, they're not identically equal to one another is that CMG doesn't have, in fact, the ability to apply a Dirichlet boundary condition exactly. You have to trick it. You have to basically put a constant bottom hole pressure well on the edge of the domain. And so because it uses a well model, there's just a tiny difference, but um, so I would say in this case that the, the explicit and implicit method that we derived in class is actually more accurate than CMG. Again, if you take lots of grid blocks, uh, the differences are going to be way out in the far decimal places and you won't even notice. Okay? So uh, with that, you, you know, you won't you won't use this transmissibility form for this homework, but for everything going forward, uh, we'll use this transmissibility form. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I think the TAs will have office hours tomorrow afternoon. Um, you know, I don't have any scheduled office hours, but I plan to be around all afternoon myself, so if you want to come by and see me.